All right, uh, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Um, here we are with week number one of the IGL. I guess I should put my window down a little bit. It's kind of raining outside, so uh, yeah, you might you might be hearing that and cars and planes and all all that jazz. Uh, but anyway, I know his team, my opponent's team, is not on the layout, but it's just kind of because there's no real nice visual pretty thing that you can look at the Pokemon on, and I didn't want to take the time to. Um, Put individual mons on the layout. I don't know. It, it wasn't given to me, so I didn't make it. So uh, I can go through the team. You're just going to have to use your ears instead of your eyes, I guess. He's got the Tyranitar, Mega Venusaur, Togekiss, Alakazam, Kyurem, Tentacruel, Cobalion, Vicavolt, Palosand, Mag Magmar, and Lickitung. Now, interesting that he drafted Tyranitar round one. Um, and then he drafted Mega Venusaur because Synthesis does not work as well in the sand. Not that he has to run sand, he could just run on Nerve and not have to worry about that. But um, yeah, definitely, it's it's not, Tyranitar is not a Mon that usually goes round one, but I don't really know when where he was in the draft order, so he might have been late and then um, just sniped a bunch of times. So anyway, I mean, it's still a monster, it's still a big threat, but uh, yeah, looking at my team... Um, I have the Mega Deancey with Calm Mind, Psychic, Moonblast, and Power Gem. Decided to run the special set. This will outspeed a Cobalion, as long as it's not Scarfed. Um, oh, I don't know if I said this in the draft analysis or yet, but or not, but uh, Legacy moves are allowed. So like you, you can use Hidden Power and Pursuit. Those are really the only two ever, but that's interesting to note. So we'll keep that in mind. But um, yeah. Calm Mind, Psychic, Moonblast, and Power Gem. Pretty self-explanatory. I mean, I would like to have Earth Power for Cobalion, but I, I think Psychic for Mega Venusaur is a little bit more important because I can still hit Cobalion with a Moonblast, um, and I have other things that can kind of deal with Cobalion. It's it's definitely a mod that I see coming, but um, yeah. And then basically everything else just gets hit really hard by this mod. Psychic's also nice for Tentacruel. If he wants to bring that to try to to try to beat my DNC, which he probably won't because again I could run Earth Power. Um, uh, he, he, I mean, he could still bring it, but I don't know if he'll bring it for DNC. He might bring a, a specially uh, physically defensive uh, variant of that Pokemon. So next up we have Weavile. This will outspeed Alakazam, which is great. Uh, we can also triple axle Alakazam and break its sash and just kill it there. So we got triple axle knockoff low kick ice shard. Very very standard. <laughs> Nothing going on. That's too crazy about this one. I can probably do a KO Mega Venusaur with Triple Axle. I mean, I'm Life Orb. Probably won't want to stay in on it, but if it tries to switch in in on me, it's not gonna like that. Um, I can I can destroy Togekiss as long as it's not Scarf. I do see Scarf Togekiss coming. Then that's that's really a, a, a problem. Uh, Low Kick is great for three Mons: Tentacruel or sorry, not Tentacruel, Kyurem, Cobalion, and Tyranitar. It's great for all three of those. Um, which is really important because we want to be able to do a lot of damage to those. So, low kick on Weavile is always so nice. Um, yeah, again, pretty pretty standard stuff here. Uh, Snorlax with a Choppelberry. This Mon is here to try to set up. Uh, I do have the Choppelberry to take a hit from Tentacruel. Sorry, not Ten Why do I keep saying Tentacruel? Cobalion. I have it for if Cobalion wants to close combat me. The only thing is if I start setting up Curse and he goes for Sacred Sword, it's going to break through those defense uh, uh, stats. So it's the, the Curse isn't going to matter, but that's that's why Chopper Berry is, is nice. Cobalion is also kind of a threat for other things like uh, like Weavile and Mega Deancey. So I do want to have, I do want to try to um, kind of kind of deal with that uh, and go for That's why I have Earthquake. Earthquake's also nice for um, what else? It's nice for Tyranitar. Uh, his ghost type is Palosand, which I'm not really threatened by. I can just rest up, set up on that thing and just rest up. So I don't need to have like Dark Slariot for that. So, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty obvious what we want to do here. Only problem is if, if he brings, uh, Scarf Togekiss and tries to trick me, that could be really annoying. And if he breaks my, or if he, if he has Sacred Star on Cobalion and uses like Aura Sphere or Togekiss to, to make me eat my Chapelberry or like, Focus Blast on Kyurem or Fighting Type move on Tyranitar, I don't know. If he if he uses my Chopperberry and it's not on uh, Cobalion, that could be an issue. So, gotta look out for that. Next up we have Fizz Def uh, Skarmory. This is really here mainly for the Mega Venusaur and the Tyranitar. If he's 
physically offensive Tyrant, which usually they are. I mean, if he brings flamethrower, then good prep on his part. Um, but I don't even think Tyrantar has the best matchup anyway, uh, so we'll see if that, that thing even comes in the first place. Um, safety goggles is nice because I can basically, as long as uh, as long as Venusaur doesn't bring Hidden Power Fire, I can just completely wall that thing with this with this mod, and I can Brave Bird it and then roost off uh, some health. I probably should be speed creeping it, but I felt like the maximum bulk is going to be really helpful for Tyranitar. Body press is also great for Tyranitar, uh, Cobalion, and Kiram. Sorry, I had to stop talking for a minute there. Um, and yeah, that's basically, it's it's great for those two mods, which is his first two picks. Also, if Kiram runs physically offensive, it's great for that too. Um, yeah, and, and Cobalion, I guess. It's nice for Cobalion. Although that mod can full switch, which can be annoying. So now I have the Rotom Heat. Um, this is a specially defensive variant. It's here for the Togekiss, because to Scarf Togekiss is really annoying. Uh, if he starts air, air Slash flinching me, he's got coverage, which is pretty good for my team, like Flamethrower for Skarm, uh, or Sphere for Snorlax, so that thing is a little bit of a threat, that, that's why we have this Rotom Heat. This might turn into Silvali Psychic, because I do have an issue dealing with Alkazam as well, um, but I don't like like a Timid Life Orb Psy Shock, just two kills me, and a Timid Life Orb uh, Psychic just might, even if I'm at full health, so... Um, yeah, that's kind of an issue. Also, Silvali's a little bit better for Mega Venusaur. Um, I can't really beat Mega Venusaur with this set, but, um, I could maybe wear it down a little bit and then Pain Split. Pain Split's great for this recovery. Um, he, he won't want to stay in with Togekiss, which is great. I can just Volt Switch out. As long as he does bring Apollo Sand, that's like the freest Volt Switch, so. Um, Defog's also really nice for, the things like, uh, Weavile and... I mean, that's basically, it. just in general, rocks are kind of annoying, so, um, yeah, that's great. And then we can, yeah, we can paint split. Overheat's just kind of there to do a lot of damage if he switches something out, and it, it will do a lot of damage, so, um, that's, that's good. Last but not least, again, okay, so, basically, this might turn into Silvali Psychic. I had a mock with, with Silvali Psychic that I got destroyed in, and then I had a mock with Rotom Heat that I did really well in, so, I'm not really sure which one is going to come, but I think, we're, I think this is the set I want to bring. So, last but not least, we have the Mian Shao. Choice Scarf going to outspeed Togekiss. I know. Um, it's, that's not a thing. What, what is this outspeeding? Kiram. Scarf Kiram I can outspeed. I really wanted to go Adamant, but I didn't want to risk him running max speed Scarf to Kiram and outspeeding me. That can be annoying. Um, so, close combat U-turn, or not close combat knockoff U-turn poison jab. With the regenerator, so that's gonna be really nice. Just it's just nice. I wanted a comfortable lead that I could lead against anything. Uh, if he if he leads if he brings Tyranitar, I could definitely see him leading with it, trying to get rocks up and getting the sand up. Um, he could also lead Venusaur uh, just to get the Mega off and and see what it does, what it wants to do, uh, predicting maybe my Mega DNC lead or something like that. Um, but yeah. I, in either of those kids, I just want something that can lead off and just choice scarf U turn. I'll outspeed anything. He can also try to lead Cobalion, in which case uh, we'll we'll pro we'll probably threaten it out. If we don't, um, then I can just U turn and then kind of I can go into Skarmory or or something like that. Maybe even Rotom. Um, kind of deal with him. Go go from there if he tries to get rocks up. So yeah, this is this is that poison judge like for Togekiss. Uh, knockoff is nice for Palo Sand. U-turn uh, is great for everything. So that's the team. Uh, hope you hope you enjoyed this team builder. I'm gonna cut to the battle right now and and uh, let, let's see how we do. Week one. Hopefully we don't go 0 and 3 again, like the last two leagues we've been in. That would that would suck. All right, uh, I'll see you guys there. All right, here we are with the battle. Um, as you can see, my opponent brought a little bit of a different kind of team. Uh, he brought the Mega Venusaur, Magmar, uh, Cobalion, Palosand, Vigavolt, and Tentacruel. So the Magmar was definitely not something I really prepped for at all. I mean, I felt like this team generally um, deals with it pretty well. So that's that's fine that he brought it. Don't really know what it wants to do. Um, so that's a little bit annoying. Cobalion is going to be a big threat. Uh, I just know it. Um, Palosand. Palosand is something I didn't really expect to come, but I, I do have a good amount of things for it. 
and Vicavolt, I have Rotom there for it, so it's not that big a deal uh, completely. And then Tentacool, it's just kind of annoying in general. So I'm just going to lead with my uh, Mian Xiao, as is my uh, my predictable lead. Now this is going to be a long battle, so kind of buckle in and, and uh, enjoy the ride. So I'm going to go for U-turn here as he goes into the Magmar. Uh, no, no real problem with that. I'm just going to go into Balawick as yeah, he's going to switch. I believe I click Volt Switch. Yeah, I do. Um, which is fine. Uh, and I, I just go for o Overheat here, predicting him to Stealth Rocks. I don't want to switch as he goes for Stealth Rocks because I can just defog this turn. Um, now, I know he's going to be able to shore up, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, but I do go for the defog there as uh, yeah, he just goes for the shore up. Uh, this is fine. Um, I'm going to go into Weavile as I see him going for Rocks again as he does, and now I kind of get a free hit off on something. I know he's probably going to bring in the Magmar, and he does. This thing does get Flame Body, so it's a 30% chance to burn me if I hit him, if I contact him. Luckily, uh, no burn there. I didn't even want to risk it, so I just went into Balawick. Um, I, I could have gone for knockoff and killed him, but I didn't want to risk getting burnt, so I also want to take this opportunity to get up, uh, or to defog the rocks away. So that's nice. Gets an Impalisan again. I was tempted to go Weavile again, but I thought he might predict that. He does go for Scorching Sands. Luckily, he does not get the burn. As I'm just going to U-turn here. Um, seeing as how, I don't know, Mian Chao doesn't look like the, it looks like the most expendable mod on my team, basically. So, he goes for Psychic there. So, now I know all four of his moves. Stealth Rock, Shore Up, Scorching Sands, and Psychic. Which, I'm not really sure what that's for. I guess just Mian Chao, which is interesting. Uh, he goes for Volt Switch here as I switch into... Uh, well, no, we both switched, um, and, uh, yeah, he gets to the whole switch. That damage tells me he's, like, modest specs, because I'm fully split F Snorlax, so I definitely know he's 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 going to be choice locked into that. He goes for close combat here uh, with the Cobalion, and uh, now he's going to switch into the uh, Vicavolt, as uh, now I'm I'm in against Vicavolt, and I don't want to stay in, so I'm going to go for the... For the uh, Rotom switches. He gets up sticky webs. A little bit annoying. I'm just gonna click defog here um, because I know he's gonna bring in Palisand and there's no reason to overheat. Um, so now we're in against this Demon again. Not the best situation. Uh, I don't really know what he's gonna do, but I know with his four moves he can't really hit Skarm. He's gonna bring it up, bring it in here. Um, I believe I go for the spikes. I do. Okay. Um, get up spikes as he brings in Magma. This is fine. I just bring in Battle. Problem with here is that. The spikes are just a waste, like, I just have to defog now. So, he's gonna go for clear smog, for whatever that does for him, as I just defog the, ro the, the rocks and the spikes. Um, probably could've just brave birded against the palisand, and then I kill the magmar, but um, then I might get burned, and that might be annoying. So I just volt switch as he lets magmar go down. He does get whittle damage on Rotom, but I'm still at a decent amount of health uh, for his team. I mean... Other than Cobalion, he can't really hit my, he can't one-shot my Rotom with anything, and I can just pain split, so that's something good. Now, he predicts my uh, Skarmory. Um, I'm really thinking the way he brings in that Cobalion, he's either, he either knows he can live a low kick, or he's Scarfed. Uh, and he does predict the Skarmory there and go for Volts, which is a good play for him. Then I bring in the Snorlax on the Tentacruel. He goes for knockoff, knocking off my Chobbleberry. A little bit annoying there. As I go for a Curse here. Not too sure what I want to do as uh, he brings in the Venusaur, and um, I know he's probably, I go for the Earthquake there, does a decent chunk, um, but now he's just going to Mega Evolve, and um, he's going to Leech Eat me, which is a tad annoying. Here I go for the Body Slam, and I get the Para, which is huge, 30% uh, chance, uh, coming in clutch, as now he's going to Synthesis, as I believe I just click, yeah, okay, I do click Rest. Because I want to get back up to full so I can kind of take on certain things. I can beat Palisand 1v1. I can beat Tentacruel 1v1. I could probably even beat Vicavolt 1v1. But I can't deal with the Cobalion now that my Chopper Bear is knocked off. And I'm asleep on top of that. So uh, he predicts. I guess he predicted the Skarmory there and goes into Vicavolt. Or maybe he just wanted to bring in Vicavolt. So he gets a free switch into Cobalion as, as I have to keep Skarmory around. Because if this Cobalion Scarfed, I have no other way of dealing with it without Skarmory healthy. So he Volt Switches here. At this point, I'm kind of realizing that um, Mian Chao is not going to do too much for me in this game. I go for a knockoff to just knock off whatever item he has. He has the Black Sludge. Now he knocks off my Scarf, which is fine. But honestly, I'd rather not have the Scarf here. Um, so I can change up my moves a little bit. So I'm going to U-turn. 
um, as uh, I don't know regenerator is nice so I can keep a little bit of survivability on my Mian Chao but um, it's gonna actually just an easy easy play here and now he goes into Cobalion I think I just burn a turn of rest here yeah as I don't have sleep talk um, so I go to Mian Chao here just predicting him to close combat and kill me but he just goes for Volt Switch which is fine um, I guess predicting the Skarmory again uh, now he goes into Vien v Venusaur. Venusaur, I'm going to U-turn out. Um, not too sure what I want to do. I go into Rotom here because uh, I want to be able to defog. He goes for Leech Seed. Uh, this is fine. I can actually just Pain Split this turn. Uh, just to make sure like if he Sludge Bombs, I don't die. Um, so I get a good amount of health back there. I see he does get fully paralyzed. I don't really know what he went for there. Um, he's only revealed two moves. And later he's going to reveal it as Sludge Bomb. So... Uh, that's something to keep in mind. He gets paralyzed again. Um, so maybe if that last move is Sleep Powder, this game goes differently in that sense. I don't know. But um, now I'm just going to Volt Switch as uh, luckily he doesn't bring in Palace yet. Now I'm going to be able to get in the, uh, the Skarmory as I believed he was either going to Sleep Powder or Sludge Bomb. And I have uh, Safety Goggles on on uh, Skarmory so that I don't get Sleep Powdered. Uh, and then he gets paralyzed again as I bring in Mancho. Mancho is really not important here. I just want him to kill it so that I can get a free switch into something. Um, but, I mean, I'll, I'll take it, I guess, <laughs> as he goes for the Leech Seed here. I was surprised he didn't switch against my Skarmory. Tells me he's he's confident in 1v wanting it, which is interesting. Uh, he synthesizes here, or synthesizes, I don't know. Um, as here, I believe I just go for Brave Bird. He does bring the Palo Sand. Which is a good play for him. No, I just go for Spikes, wow. I mean, this game was like last night, so I'm kind of surprised. I don't remember uh, as many plays as I as I do, um, so yeah, uh, I go for spikes. Is I'm I'm just trying to just switch it up, trying to do something different. But I also cannot have the rocks on my side of the field. I really don't want them there. And I believe I just pain split here. Oh wait, no, that was the turn of default. Never mind. He went for psychic for chip. Then he predicts my pain split. Very good play for him. Um, as I I suppose I could have just predicted that and gone for volt switch. I don't really lose much by doing that, but. Uh, because I'm spit F, I actually live the Scald. I was hoping he would maybe over predict and click to uh, Toxic Spikes, but I do also live it, which I guess is a good thing that he went for Scald instead of Toxic Spikes. Because uh, now I get a free switch and a wave off. At this point, I'm pretty sure he's going to be Scarfed. He does close combat here. Um, so, yeah, it, it's <laughs> really hard um, to see that he's not Scarfed at this point. So I do go bring in Mega Dancy. Seeing how he had, as he how. Oh my god. Seeing as how he had a spit F drop, I was confident that I could kill him with Moonblast. Given his moveset, he's probably offensive, so I go for Moonblast there, and uh, I don't pick up the, uh, I don't know, I don't I don't pick up the, the kill there, but I'm able to Moonblast again to get the special attack drop, which is huge, and I'm going to be able to go for Psychic. Does about half, um, maybe he went for uh, Synthesis there, but if he did, I could have just Calm Minded uh, on him, and I'm confident his last move wasn't HP Steal. Just, I don't think it would be. Um, it would probably be Sleep Powder, if anything, or maybe HP Fire. Uh, but he probably would have gone for that against Skarmory, I don't know. So then he goes in Cobalion. I know that he's trying to beat me with a Scar, so I'm just going to bring in Skarmory. Um, like, I know that he knows, that I know, that DNC is faster than Cobalion without a Scarf. So that's why I thought he was going to go for Eye in there, the head there. Um... If he turns later, I'm able to knock off here, and apparently after after the game, he said that he thought that knock off, uh, justified works like flash fire, where like it boosts your attack, but it doesn't knock off your item. Like maybe you're immune to it or something. But I know that that's not how it works. So if he brings in Cobalion, he knocks off the scarf, and I cannot speed him next turn and take him out. So uh, Vicavolt comes in. I hit the first triple axel and then miss. So 15%. Uh, I'm not, I haven't done the math. I don't know if that would Oko or not. Um, I feel like it wouldn't. I feel like he'd live just on a sliver or something. So, uh, Weavile's not able to pick up the, the last three kills. Uh, Polishing comes in here, and I'm able to just uh, kind of beat that. And then I know that Power Gem is going to kill Vicavolt, um, even at max HP. It, like, it'll Oko from full. So, I knock him out there, and that's going to be GG. Obviously, very haxy with the. Uh, with the fully fully paras on Venusaur, uh, and that end game could have gone a little bit differently if I hadn't gotten so lucky. Um, but yeah, it was. I felt like I didn't have momentum for a lot of the game, and then at some point, I think it was when I killed Tentacles, I felt like I had I had um, a little bit more momentum with uh, 
with, with everything. And then, you know, when he brought out, when he brought out Cobalion, um, on the Weavile, and then I brought in Manchow and it died. I, I knew he was Scarf, and then I got a free switch in of Dancy, and then, um, and then everything just kind of, I was able to do a lot of damage. I, I really waited on Mega Dancy. I didn't want to, I didn't want to be impatient. This was a really long battle, almost 60 turns, and I, I just really did not want to be impatient and bring it out and let it die really quickly. So, um, glad we got the week one dub uh, next week. I don't know who we face, but should be a good one. I'll try to prep better so that maybe I can um, handle my opponent a little bit, a little bit more swiftly. I don't really like having these long battles, uh, but it is what it is. I mean, I got the win, so that's what matters. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.